Next, and as we end here, I want to quickly end on this story. Very interesting, very funny. It looks like Mr. Daniel Lee's redemption in fashion has been completed. Everything that has gone on beforehand has been forgotten about. The rumors of him calling some woman in some Bottega Veneta boardroom a black beepity beep 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 have completely gone. No one cares, and he's been resurrected and now become the creative director of Burberry after Ricardo Tishi got the boot for somehow, you know, falling so low that he gets a boot from Burberry. Imagine somebody of Ricardo Tishi's talent getting the boot from Burberry is really showing you how low that guy is. He's down real bad. He needs to stand up immediately. I'm not too sure if there's ever going to be a renaissance of flipping Ricardo Tishi. Maybe it's just, you know, one of those things that happens in a designer's lifetime where you just lose it. I'm not really too sure how that can happen because I still remember very fondly the impact some of those early Givenchy Ricardo shows had on me, especially when it comes to the casting and the physicality and the textures and the aggression and the attitude behind the clothes. And then it comes to Burberry and it's like, and of course Burberry, you know, they have to keep it moving. They decided to go and hire Daniel Lee of former Bottega Veneta fame to try and resurrect the brand or to bring it back to some level of relevancy because it's been dying and struggling for a while. But as I said prior, Daniel Lee has been at the heart of controversy himself because he got booted out of Bottega Veneta allegedly because of some very racy racial remarks. He said, especially think about it, this was like post all that George Floyd thing happening post all these brands putting up black squares and saying that they're going to, you know, try and do things differently and try and get more minority marginalized voices involved in what they do and not have it be so whitewashed. And, you know, they're going to try and rewrite the wrongs of having one rule for others and one rule for us. But really at the heart of it, this is what happens. If you, this is what happens. If you're on, if you're on recorded camera saying you love Hitler, you're out. But if there's rumors that you might like Hitler, you're not out. Because if you if you if you listen to the rumors out there, Kanye's been saying these things about Hitler from time. But no one really was willing to come out and say anything about it because at the time Kanye was doing his thing, everyone was basically clout chasing off of him and kind of sucking all his coolness and his value to the culture out of him. Then as soon as he became, you know, um, uh, as soon as he be, didn't become useful to be associated with him because of all the anti-Semitic rhetoric he was putting out there and going on that flipping anti-Jew press run and whatnot, then people started to back away and then suddenly all the stories about, oh yeah, when he was making My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, he actually had a song that about how much he likes Mussolini. Oh, now you suddenly got a voice you want to speak. Same thing goes for Daniel Lee. So he might have said these things about black people in meetings, which is funny because for the longest time, it felt like he was kind of pandering to us blacks out there. He might say these derogatory things about people behind the scenes, but because it wasn't on camera, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It wasn't on camera. We can't say nothing that wasn't on camera. And he gets a job immediately. I don't have a problem with him getting a job. Because I said, I'm, I'm anti-cancel culture. I feel like cancel culture should only be applied to the fans. I don't feel like corporations or industries should cancel people i feel like it should always be the fan so if the fans of brands or the fans of fashion overall says you know what we don't fuck with daniel lee we're not going to support anything that he does and they decide to protest and refuse to buy burberry because of what they heard fair enough but i don't want the industry to come in and say you're cancelled for stepping out of line you're cancelled for saying wrong speak you're cancelled for not having the right opinion no it should always be the fans but I also don't like the double standards. I also don't like the selective politicking. For instance, I feel like if this was anybody else, they would have probably been excommunicated from fashion. But because he's got a value, because of all the great work he did at Bottega Veneta, which, you know, you can be argued about in terms of what his impact was because of what Matteo Blasi is now doing at Bottega Veneta. Was he really the talented guy behind it? I'm not really too sure. But regardless, he's got some rep behind him. So clearly brands are going to be willing to take a chance, especially people like Burberry. But, the double standards I hate because it I want to be fair for everybody, even playing ground. If I fuck up and say something very derogatory, which I would never, but just imagine if I said something insanely crazy about the queer, flinter, LGBTQ community, I want to be given the same grace that he gets given. I know it's not going to happen because it's similar to sports. If Messi does something compared to a fucking random player in the Man United squad, of course he's going to get more leeway because he's fucking Lionel Messi, but let's not pretend like that's not happening that's what people are doing they're pretending it's not happening and again Vogue giving this big spread interview is really really insulting but anyway let's read it regardless courtesy of Vogue checks new mate Daniel Lee shares his vision for Burberry written by Nicole Phelps it says 
Daniel Lee is sitting in a penthouse suite at Claridge's in an army green sweater sporting black pants and Nikes. Of course he is. Call people niggas in boardrooms and you get to sit in Claridge's sipping on green tea and enjoying life. Of course. It is mid-November and beyond his French doors, uh, behind him, a sweeping view of the dizzying London is visible. Big Ben stands in the distance. The night before, Lee was at the Chiltern Firehouse. Of course he was. Call people niggas in boardrooms and you get given a fully comped room in the Chiltern Firehouse to pontificate over fashion and pretend like you're sorry for saying the things that you said when you're not really because you still get paid. Of course. Anyway, reconnecting with local fashion reporters and at least one of his former professors of Central St. Martins. Of course. He went to the same uni I went to because it's full of absolute toppers. Of course. And his throat is a bit sore. Hmm, wonder why. It was nice to do it in the kind of environment he says, you know, when I'm not exhausted from a collection. Get out of here. Lee, who's 36, was named Chief Creative Officer of Burberry in September, just days after Ricardo Tichy's final show, the British Heritage brand. It's a homecoming for the designer. His creative direction position at Bottega Veneta had him living between Milan and London. I am really happy because it feels full circle. I wonder if this first show at Burberry is going to have Skepta come out, the first model. <laughs> <laughs> right, Skepta Roll, who's the guy? Who's the guy that's married to who's no boyfriend of India? Uh Dami. Right? He has Dami come out as a first model to kind of, you know, um counteract these rumors that he might be a racist. No 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 no. Like look, I know Skepta, look, look, it's Octavian, look, it's Octavian. Skepta, look, look, look. <laughs> or one of those laughy, laughy JD Sports commentator guys. I'm not sure what their names are. But those guys, all those comedy shows. Maybe you have one of those come out. I haven't lived here four times since my St. Martin days. I went to New York for Donna Karen, then Paris for Celine, then Milan, going back towards uh going going forwards between those various places and coming to London as an escape or for inspiration. It's nice to be back here and based properly. So imagine you get when you say racist stuff about the blacks, you get relegated to living in London after living in all these amazing places, New York, Paris and Milan. I'd imagine, especially as a fashion person. They're probably, you know, they're way more fun places to live in in London day to day, I'd imagine. But what do I know? And so that, 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 that might be his, um, his penitence, right? That he has to live in London. Um, when he's not working, which let's face it, isn't often these days. <laughs> when are they going to mention the racism? When? Let's see if they're going to mention it. Lee spends um, time with his partner, Ricardo Boule, a former principal dancer at the American Ballet Theatre. Let's see what his boyfriend looks like. Ricardo Boule, a dancer. So he's probably going to be, what, six foot plus, ripped like an absolute Adonis. Oh, look at that. Is that what, is that what flipping um, Daniel Lee's messing with, yeah? Skin. That's a very handsome man. No homo. This guy looks very good. Holy smokes. Look at this picture here. Look at this picture here. I don't even know how you get in that position. That looks like, um, I'm not sure if you, if you guys have done workout stretches before, but when you're doing a, something called a couch stretch, you kind of put your back foot on the back of a couch and you kind of have this type of position, but legit, I've never got myself in this kind of, what is it, like, a, like an eight position in my life. That looks incredible. Look at that. Look at the muscles bulging out all the places. Jesus Christ. Is that a book? Okay, there's a book by him there. Jesus, he looks incredible. So maybe is it going to be ballet influence? It's going to be like urban ballet, right? Like in the slums of London where we get down with a check print, right? It's going to have all these kind of... No, maybe it's going to be that. I'm not too sure. But yeah, regardless. Okay, cool. Mate, life life is good, isn't it? Life is good when you're Daniel Lee and you've got that at home. Life is absolutely swell. A former principal, blah, blah, they go to the Royal Opera House to see ballet. Um, Crystal Pitti's Light of Passage was really amazing, he says, and they seek out music. Kendrick Lamar, the O2. Of course, I'm not racist. I like Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> um, he's also in the midst of a house renovation. It's a Georgian terrace, very typical London, which I love because it feels like a Charles Dickinson. Um, it's nice to have that feeling of being in a space that is history and you're just a, cer uh, just a certain part of it. It's lived before you and it will live after you. So it's got a new house, everything's going well. Lee's Burberry debut is scheduled for February 20th, giving him just a few months to define the vision of the brand. At Bottega Veneta, he had much more runway, eight months from his appointment in 2018 for the first show it was his inaugural creator director role and at the start he was so shy to take questions backstage but didn't mean lee hacked sorry lee left a strong point of view 
His pouch and cassette bags were into the hits, and the surprising appeal of his square toe woven in Parsetio shoes spawned copycats up and down London's high street. Ditto his sturdy puddle boots, true, which are still going strong now, right? Um, these could be jumping off point for the more outdoorsy Burberry under Leeds watch. Bottega Veneta's signature bright green came the hottest colour in fashion. The only thing I hate about fashion is that I think, again, I don't necessarily think he designed these things. Obviously, it's his own creative direction, so maybe he kind of has final say on particular hardware pieces or finishes and whatnot. But in terms of designing them, there's obviously a accessories designer, footwear designer that puts these things together and kind of you know ideates the initial concept. But they're never celebrated, so we never find out. So, for instance, I kind of attribute the success of the famous um, you know Saint Laurent um, harness boot with Heidi Semen right but i'm sure he didn't actually design it himself i'm sure it was something that was done by somebody in-house but because they don't celebrate who the footwear designer is you just attribute all the success to Heidi Semen. you think oh yeah he's a fucking genius and i'm pretty sure same goes to Bottega Veneta the puddle boot um the tractor the kind of the, the other boot the massive one the kind of big brown one that everyone wears or the black one whatever it may be called that probably isn't his all the bags probably isn't him either so you know like who who are these people that are responsible for these things why aren't they celebrated more in fashion why can't we name them and say especially when you're doing award ceremonies like oh you know footwear of the year this person gets celebrated for designing it's amazing shoe even like the triple s for instance at blend sugar we know them that did design that from scratch or somebody in-house that did it but still that person doesn't get celebrated it's a really annoying part of fashion because it's definitely a collaboration and a collective effort especially on that kind of level you know doing things all on your own you're not some you know St. Martin student anymore you're having to kind of produce stuff at that kind of level and produce it and manufacture it and get into stores you're going to need help so not celebrating those people is really really awful I'm sure people in the business know who they are because these designers of accessories and footwear and whatnot and bags they kind of you know um go they kind of uh jump from brand to brand to brand especially the big ones because everyone knows their power and how good they've done and the cv they've got and whatnot but it'd be nice for people like myself fans on the outside to also know their names so you can also celebrate them and stand them just as much as we stand the creative directors and lead designers anyway concluded he was rewarded for all of this with four statues at the London uh, statuettes at London Fashion Awards in December 2019. Um, a feat matched by Nova designer before or after. Early on in the pandemic, Patek Veneta was flying high enough to step away from the show calendar in favor of more intimate runway um, off the circuit. Then as quickly as Patek Veneta took off days after the Detroit runway show in 2021, Mary J. Blige and Lil' Kim were in the front row. Lee left the house. The parent company's caring said oh, that only that it was a joint decision. Okay, they're going to talk about racism. Let's see let's see here which led to a lot of speculation both online and within the industry about why lee may have gone not gone he was let go definitely fired because we know how fashion is like if you've got a good thing going on why would you stop it why would you end it just to kind of hire his subordinate who's obviously doing a good job but still daniel lee's the kind of sexy you know glitzy name in industry maybe not so in the industry because you, you, know, you heard a lot of stories post him leaving Bottega Veneta that he was a bit of a tyrant and no one liked him and they all they preferred Bottega Blessing instead but still for us laymen out on the outside the kind of the star of the show was daniel lee so to sack him considering the success of the brand it seemed a little bit hasty and then when you think of the rumors it made sense especially when you consider the time in the year or time of the you know the time in life we're in with all the kind of you know strained racial relations in the states and whatnot and the conversations around um you know inequality in the workplace and lack of representation it makes sense why caring were like no we need to distance ourselves from this guy as soon as possible because we don't want anyone finding out that he's been dropping n-bombs in meetings all the time because he thinks he listens to kendrick lamar gives him a license to do so I'm not really sure but let's continue um when asked about all this um yeah let's see this when asked all of this oh, sorry when asked all of this a year later lee doesn't address the matter head on you see instead he says i think people will see forward how the team continues to work together at burberry there's people i've worked with at various points of my career so basically he's saying that you'll see the black people who are hired at Patega Veneta will also follow me at burberry so clearly i can't be racist right i can't be racist it's impossible i listen to kendrick lamar and i've got black people working in my team he doesn't dwell on regrets either. I still feel very honored that I see the influence of Bottega Veneta all around me, you know, when I'm walking down the street. Oh, look at that flex. He's feeling himself. 
um, since Lee's appointment at Burberry, um, much has been made about the Britishness, especially since Britain, especially within Britain. Lee says he understands why, as a kid growing up, Burberry is a brand that everybody in the country knows. It's really a symbol of Britain and also the NF and all that stuff. But anyway, we put that to one side. His own connection with the label is deeper than that of your average Englishman. I'm from Bradford, Yorkshire, very close to Castleford, which the trench coats are manufactured into King and to Keeley, where the Garbadine is made. Lee says, so it's very close to my homeland. And some of my mum's family worked in various factories that were supplying for Burberry. My mum actually has a trench coat that her aunt had gotten her as a retirement gift. It's kind of sweet. Lee is the oldest of three siblings and his brother, a plumber and sister, a nurse specializing in alcohol dependency, both still live in Yorkshire, not far from his mother and father. We've been researching that what is left of the industry in the UK and the designer says sadly it wasn't as well ring fenced as it was in France or Italy, but there's still elements there. This is exciting to think about what's possible um, part about what possible partners we have and how we can help save jobs. So clearly there's a rebrand effort going on there for me when it comes to burberry it's sort of similar to like reebok no amount of reinvention will ever make reebok or burberry cool in my opinion or will ever um disassociate reebok and burberry from their very english roots and if you know what i mean you know what i mean right nf type stuff and whatnot bmp type of vibes because from where i'm from especially in east london a lot of the people that I saw wearing Burberry, I saw wearing Reebok, were definitely the type of people who, you know, they'd call black people monkeys and whatnot, and they'd refer to Pakistani people as Pakis. Definitely not things that you'd want to kind of uh, be uh, affectionately known as. So, if, the, if they're trying to make Burberry into a thing, it's going to take a lot of work. I don't feel like Danny Lee is going to be able to do it. And if they want to try and make Reebok into a thing, post BMP and NF type of vibe, it's not going to work either. It just is what it is. Um, after settling in, Lee's first order business has been getting to know the teams. He's also been making trips to Florence where the company has leather goods and shoes facilities to Castleford for the trenches and to the archive, which is split between London and Blythe in North of England. I've been looking at the beginning of the three major codes of the house, which is obviously the check, the knight and the garbadine and trying to understand um, what them, what can be inspired to make them forward. What is the garbadine? I'm not sure. What's that word? Maybe something that I know, but I don't actually know what the word of it is. What is garbadine? Garbadine is a durable twill. Um, worsted let wool a tightly woven fabric originally waterproof and used to make suits overcoats trousers and uniforms okay cool that's what the trench is made out of then the burberry the garbadine that's what the trench type vibe is made okay fair play the brown's founded 166 years ago when the young thomas burberry started producing garments award of the british weather he's credited with inventing garbadine a tightly woven waterproof wool circa 1879 functionality is a concept that lee has latched onto it's really about designs with meaning this um that's innovative with a purpose and as opposed to just being innovative for the new silhouette of a new constructional technique thomas burberry's intention was to make clothes for people that were outside doing things he goes it's more than mentality that i'm trying to get myself into as the conversation returns to actual fashion lee leans in and says think about the trench coat it's been around for decades so what is the bag that can be stand so what is the bag that can stand the test of time like the trench coat what is a shoe what is the overcoat that lives legitimately next to the trench coat and will be around for a very long time? We're thinking about the feeling of the outdoors. It is not necessarily about the overcoat, but also about warmth, facility, coziness, and about being on the move and not being weighed down. I'm quite excited about starting with the winter show because I think this makes a lot of sense for Burberry. That's true. Very, very true. Let's see what happens anyway, isn't it? The guy's clearly talented, knows what he's doing, apart from my jokes and whatnot. What he said there is quite exciting and how he's kind of approaching it. So let's see what he does. Lee is something of an outdoorsman himself during the year. Between Bottega Veneta, he traveled to Botswana and Zambia. <laughs> In Barbway. Ah, I like Kendrick Lamar. I traveled to the Botswana and Zimbabwe. Yeah, I can't be racist, mate. It's impossible. Botswana especially was incredible because it's one of the least inhabited countries on the planet. Um, it's grounds um, you in a way to be around animals. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. He also hiked Machu Picchu and went to Cuba twice. <laughs> i can't be racist mate look at my team look at where i'm going on holiday we won't have to wait until the runway show to get our first clue of the direction of lee's uh, headline um heading last month he shot his first run with burberry campaign with tyron Le Bon, a london-based photographer with whom he collaborated on Bottega veneta it features burberry classic scene throughout lee's lens and is set to launch in early february on the usual channels it's more traditional media strategy than one implemented at Burberry Bottega Veneta, which famously deleted Instagram content. Then he turned in favor of a more digital journal. I love working with Tyrone and his team because we all contribute to all the ideas. We have a real relationship 
and it's really about London and the UK and the mix of people who are the best at what they do you know people with real substance he prefers not to name names yet but confirms that there will be a cultural of dance football and music oh we're gonna see Skepta we're gonna see Saka I can't think let me think of the blackest people that you can use though Skepta, Saka, and who else? Someone else is pretty black. I don't know. Whoever else you can think of out there and dance, he's going to get them on their front and center. <laughs> and we're all going to lap it up, mate. Lap it up. Burberry flies um, the flag for Britishness in the UK. Hmm, more so Englishness. But hey, let's continue. So we have to use our platform um, because we have a responsibility to communicate those things. I don't know if this is the right way to, to say it. Uh, but more than surprising people i really would like them to see the new vision feel reassured and like oh yeah that makes sense this is what Bradbury should be i'm not racist like they'll say that but yeah you know <laughs> the first fashion show lee saw after graduating from st martin's was christopher bailey's for 2012 collection artist for Bradbury. the one with the artificial rain the knitwear was really great christopher was there da, da, da. will lee stay long he seems to be approaching it as a bit like a Georgian terrace. I don't try to predict too far into the future, but you know, my intention is to write an iconic chapter. Well, considering he's refurbishing an entire house there and whatnot, I'm assuming he's probably planning on staying a while. I'm sure that contract is probably five to six years or something like that. And if he does a good job anyway, because of how much Burberry's struggling, I'm sure they'll end up keeping him there anyway going forward because they've not exactly been doing great stuff. Um, when it comes to their collections in any way, shape or form, because I can't think of anything that's been great at Burberry, um, especially in recent years. It's been all pretty, pretty shocking. So he doesn't really have much competition in terms of um, being able to put out a semi-decent collection. I'm just going to take a quick look at the kind of the overall um, snapshot of their latest collections, but I don't think I've seen anything good from Burberry in many, many, many years. So he probably doesn't have much work cut out for him. If he put something somewhat, you know, somewhat interesting on the runway. People will absolutely lap it up. So let's see here if I can see anything that's going to be somewhat interesting. Go to Burberry, click it there and see what the vibe is saying. Here we go, Burberry, click here. and take a snapshot look at all the collections and see what I want. Yeah, see, even the Ricardo Tishi ones are terrible. Like, everything's so bad. Look, so much cream, isn't it? That kind of cream house code thing is everywhere. If anything, that's the one thing you probably should do first collection. Fuck it, just come in all black. Look at them. All the collections are brown, cream, trench, cut colorway, everywhere. So horrid. Same things all over the gaff. But they have a lot of money to spend. All the resources in the world. But it's never really been cool in any way, shape or form. And again, even Ricardo Tishi sunk there. Everyone sinks there. I think if, if they go, even if they get a job to Raph Simmons, he'd sink. It just seemed, this brand seemed like it's doomed, man. Absolutely doomed. Look at this stuff. Garbage, 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 garbage. So he's got his work cut out for him, but considering how stellar that first Bottega Veneta collection was, um, that still lives in my memory rent free. That first collection on the runway was banging. I still remember one of my favorite jackets from that collection was that kind of um, floor mat type jacket thing that was the zip sort of like came around the side. It was really impractical and weird looking, but definitely one of my favorites from there but yeah big up Burberry hopefully it works out for him with Daniel Lee over there I'm sure he's got the support of the fucking fashion industry anyway because he seems to be the media darling or whatnot so that should be good and well for him going forward